Yeah. I think we met at the Playboy Mansion, I want to yeah. say. Yeah. What year? Which, I mean, that would have been. surprise me? I think yeah. early, like maybe like 2002 or something. Oh, wow. How many times have you been to the Playboy Mansion? I didn't Not know many, you and I got kicked out. Oh, surprise, yeah? Surprise. Every time. <laughs> I, I, forget, I forget why I was kicked out. Probably was running saying, around naked, jumping in the grotto. I think it was more of a cocaine thing. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I think I was they like. They caught you doing drugs? I think I was doing cocaine like really blatantly out in the open. Right. Yeah. And, they're like, there's uh, bathrooms for that. So, yeah, yeah, right. There's cocaine room for that. Yeah, yeah. Um, right. Yeah, you know, there's actually, Hef was not a fan of hard drugs. Right. He was pretty anti-hard drugs, from right. what I remember. Yeah, you never saw him touch anything, really. But, for but sure. you know, he was definitely, he was a fan of the Quaaludes. I think that was kind of well known. You know, you hear lots of stories that he had his, uh -huh. his special doctor that took mm -hmm. care of special needs, <laughs> you know. How do you get invited to the Playboy Mansion? Is it like a letter or a phone call? Yeah, Steve, how'd you get invited? I can't remember. I, 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 you I, just showed I, up. <laughs> yeah. That's I mean, kind of a I, that's why they right? kicked him out. Yeah. <laughs> I think I actually do remember, and that it was, uh, it came through like the Jackass channels. Okay. Mm. That yeah. there was like the Jackass like guys. Like a publicist, movie. somebody probably around the time where yeah. the movies came out, and they got you up there as like, a, hey, he's got a new movie out. Let's get him up right. here. It'll be wacky and zany. Watch him create all kinds of problems. Right. And they're like, oh yeah, that'll be fun. <laughs> oh wait, his problem is actually doing cocaine on the front lawn. No, we can't have that. Sorry. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> we didn't realize he was coming in character. How many times, <laughs> how many times have you been there? Uh, uh, three. 3,000? <laughs> like, I was there every weekend. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Dude, that's epic. At how, starting at how young? And was, were, these are like post-dated because there's no more Playboy Mansion. Yeah, what is it? What is the place? It's now? just a mansion. <laughs> a museum? Without the Playboy. Without, without I, the, well, it's not even that. It should have been that. If they were smart, that's what they would have done. They would have preserved it. But instead, this, some dude took it over, bought it, and like literally like changed it all. Like, how do you go and deface a historical monument? Like, right. why? Why? I, yeah. I seem to recall why the story. I remember the story was that Hef sold it while he was still alive. Yes. But the deal was that the guy had to keep it the way it was until Hef died. Not only that, but Hef had the right to live in it right. until he died. <clears throat> so Correct. what that did was force the people who had basically taken over the company and taken over all of his stuff to try and like make him as uncomfortable and miserable as possible while he was still there so they were doing stuff like telling him like you can no longer have you know your guests over in the parking you can never no longer have the parking guys do your parking Man. for you you can no longer have your poker nights or your movie nights or whatever these guests aren't allowed anymore you know whatever they would just like take away all of his freedoms to the point where he felt so like isolated and miserable that he didn't even want to live and i think that's kind of sadly that's that's kind of how it went down in the wow end. damn yeah. and he sold it because like financially he just couldn't personally keep it up yeah so basically what happened was you know and i don't want to go too deep but there was a uh let's say a buyout uh, with a certain company because he was in a lot of trouble say around 2007 2008 right around the time right after we shot up there actually we did the two Corys shoot up there my ex-wife Susie where, where was we shot in the up uh, there right, <laughs> right. Not where we where we shot up there no yes, 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 no, no we weren't shooting up there but we were shooting up there up there yeah <laughs> come up there. Right. Uh, yeah no so we so we were shooting for the two Corys and and uh, and have asked my ex-wife Susie to be in the magazine on the show and that was part of it and I got to actually direct Hef which was really cool wow. uh, because you know all the all the other showrunners were like scared to touch it like well, uh, we don't want to talk to the guy what are we going to say I'm like don't worry I got this you know what I mean so I was like okay Hef here's what we need you to do da -da 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 -da. <laughs> uh, and he was great he was very helpful very cool very cooperative um, and yeah he asked in a very kind of amazing way like it's so cool to have that footage of, I mean I'm not her so I wasn't really asked to be in it but to be her you know he like sits her down at the dinner table which we've sat at with him a thousand times you know it's like where he would like have the dinner in between the movie i don't do you ever go for a movie night 
I on Sunday? Not. Oh yeah, because no, that's kind of no. like <laughs> that's more like the casual, <laughs> chill, like only really close. I friends was not inner circle. Mates. Right, right, right. But you would have been, you know, yeah. if you didn't screw up and do blow. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, um, so so that's kind of how it happened for me. I mean, I went up to one of the big parties, you know, and then like five years later, I was invited back for a movie night, and then like once I went to a few of the movie nights. Eventually, I was invited to come Sunday during the afternoon by Ron Smith, and when I went in the afternoon a couple times Hef liked me you know he saw me around and he was like hey you know what you're a cool guy I was like thanks he's like if you want to come on Fridays or Saturdays anytime you're welcome anytime wow. on the weekends you're welcome so my name was added to the permanent list so basically I didn't have to get clearance I could bring whatever girls I want unless it was a big party where you still had to get you know whatever authorized for your guests but um but yeah i was like on the permanent list so any friday saturday sunday if i wanted to come up if i wanted to bring three girls four girls it didn't matter i would just wow. show up and and roll up to the gate and they would let me in so and you said that you were married at that time i was married at that time yes so you, what, was it your inclination to be married and bring three or four girls no 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 no. this was not then oh gotcha right i'm okay, saying gotcha, that's gotcha. where my status was and then once okay. i got divorced then yes i was up there quite frequently with a lot of guests with what? three or four girls yes. man that's pretty fun for somebody that's pretty never pretty been basis. for somebody that's never been like what's a party at the playboy mansion well like? here was my whole theory my whole theory was i didn't want to bring I, I didn't a lot of people say we don't want to bring sand to the beach right right i didn't want to take sand from the beach <clears throat> i didn't want to wow. be that guy you know what i mean like because i knew that if i was then i wouldn't be invited back very often you know i liked my status and i knew that my status was there because have saw that i respected the boundary you know what i mean it's all about respecting the boundary he's the host these right. are his girlfriends. Stay away from his girls. Right. You know, very simple. I enjoyed going up, seeing my friends. I had like a second family up there. So I enjoyed seeing all of, you know, the people that you see every week. It was like a weekly group and everybody got together. We watched movies. We had fun. We had laughs. Stay away from his girls. So were you like I super, bring my own careful, girls. super careful to bring like the hottest chicks? Of course. Yeah. But I mean, that's, I don't date anything other than that anyway. <laughs> right. Like, you know, <laughs> seriously, yes. like I'm just... I I have very, very, very high standards, like always have, and like detrimentally so, because those are the girls that screw with your head the most, of right. course, you know, yeah. the hotter they are, the more they're going to screw with you, Right. but whatever, I was willing to take that, you know. I love that. It's a risk you were willing to take. <laughs> I love yeah, exactly. that. And, and take I, one for the team. Yeah. I love that, and I love even more your candor about that. Yeah. Just to say, hey man, like hot chicks. Right. I mean, like, that uh, was my deal. I just, you know, when I was a single guy, I'm like, I, first, and it's it's not because I like I love everybody. I love I love sure. people. I love humans. I love my fans, whether they're big, fat, skinny, small, tiny, round, thin. It doesn't matter. You know, I love them equally, and I find beauty in everybody. Some, sure. Unless they're just a total dick bag, and then if they well, are, then there's no then, beauty there. But you know, his slum I mean, buster is like a prog model. You know, like. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, for me, it's like it's like if I'm gonna have to be with that person and wake up every day to them and be excited about it, then you know, it's got to be really, really good because right. otherwise, there's gonna be three or four more running around the corner. They're gonna be like, Corey, come here this way. And right. Like, All right, cool. It's so, interesting, man. Yeah, and being famous then in like the '80s and '90s is a totally different world, even. And you're like uh, oh no not then I'm talking now oh even now <laughs> Oh, here we go. <laughs> I'm talking like in the last 10 years. Nice. Because, right. because <laughs> no, in the 80s and 90s, I was shy and awkward and oh. didn't really date a now lot. Now you've of hit your stride. Well, in between, okay, let's let's back it up. So between my first marriage and my second marriage, I, I had a lot of growth. Between my second and my third marriage, I had a lot of growth. And by growth, I mean... Boners. <laughs> <laughs> yeah dude thanks for watching that clip and if you live in america there's a good chance that this big badass tour bus is coming to your town with my bucket list tour what is it well it's an x-rated show full of all the stuff that I would have never have been allowed to do for jackass. And a lot of it is flagrantly illegal. So it's adults only. And if you live in any of these states, then you better go to stevo.com and check out my tour schedule. Hurry up and get your tickets too, because it's selling out everywhere. Yeah, dude. Uh. Woo. 
Yeah, dude.